Hi guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you today, and today we are going to look at overclocking an RX 590. Particularly, we're going to be looking at overclocking the memory to 9GB per second, up from 8.4, and we're also going to talk about pushing it past 1600MHz. Now, the overclock that we're doing today is a 1650MHz overclock, and not all of you are going to be able to obtain that, so I'm just going to sort of show you some clocks that you can do lower, maybe like a 1620, 1625, and the things that you're going to need to change as well. Now, what you're seeing here on screen is 1650 megahertz. We're running some Battlefield 5 um, on the i5-8400 rig. But the test system that we are using now is a Ryzen 2600 rig. Um, and we are just running it at stock settings. So before you overclock, you need to think about a few things. Firstly, do you want to overclock? Now, the thing is, overclocking really only gains you about between 5 and 10 FPS. And if I did say it across a whole suite of games, like 20 games, I would say the average is actually closer to 5 for most overclocks. I know you get the odd GPU every now and then that gets some absolutely record overclocks on it, but it doesn't happen that often. Also as well, overclocking is taking your component, your graphics card, you know, out of the specifications that your manufacturer has sold it to you. So you are going to void your warranty, but they're going to have to prove that as well. So um, that's just one thing to take into account. Remember, there is a risk with that as well. Now, as for software, I'm going to be using MSI Afterburner today, but you could use Ryzen Master. You could also use the software that comes with your graphics card. Now, MSI Afterburner works with any graphics card. You don't have to have an MSI card. And the reason that we're using it today is because we've got this nice overlay going on here. Now, I'm not going to show you how to fully configure the overlay like this, but there's lots of videos online of how to do this. So when you download MSI Afterburner, it also installs a program called River Tuner. Now, this is by no means perfect. Sometimes when you get new games, the overlay won't work with it or could cause some crashes. So if you launch a game and it just crashes instantly, close one of these two programs. And most times you can just open it after you've opened the game anyway, if you go back to Windows. Um, so yeah, the overlay is good. So we can see stuff like GPU usage, VRAM usage, you know, loads of really good stuff on here. So I can even press Alt and 1. These are some keys that I've got configured. So I can, you know, I've even got min, max and average. This will even log as well. So this can log 1% lows. So this is how I do benchmarks for the channel. So yeah, really useful. So let's, before we start overclocking, we want to go into the settings because I'm showing this for people that haven't used Afterburner before. So sorry if you have, because there's a few things you're going to want to turn on. First things first, I've got start with Windows and start minimize turned on. Now I would turn these off. If you overclock too far and it crashes, sometimes you can restart your computer and Afterburner is still holding that overclock because graphics overclocks are software based. You're then doing a race against time to log in, get down here and kill MSI Afterburner before it boots up. It doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. So if you're new to overclocking, get rid of these. If you're confident at overclocking, start with Windows and start minimized is how I normally have it. Now for AMD, there's a few other features as well. Um, so we're going to need to have this enabled unified GPU usage monitoring. Now, if you're seeing your GPU usage spike from, say, 30% up to 100 really quickly and constant and just doing it where it's not bottlenecking your system, that is where you need this checked. I didn't need it checked on my Intel rig, but I need it checked on this AMD rig for some reason. Also, as well, you want unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring. We, we can leave away force constant voltage so that's everything you're going to need in the settings there now there is options for fans for setting your own custom profiles but i recommend you do that after overclocking so you can set custom profiles and this is where all the monitoring is done i'm just going to show you it briefly now just as a little tip if you're setting all of this up make sure you press ok afterwards because if you click x it doesn't save your settings and it can be painful because i've spent hours before getting it looking all fresh so that's just a few things at the settings. Right then, let's move on to some overclocking. Now, this is something I recommend everyone does, even if you don't want to overclock your card, and that is maxing out your power limit and your temperature limit. That's going to give your graphics card the most amount of power that it can, so it's going to help it hold the boost clock. For some reason, this is set to 780, and this should be 1560. So there we go. So yeah, you want to set this set this to max this is going to make sure you max out your power now sometimes you'll only see plus 25 or plus 50 it depends about how many power connectors you've got i imagine all on rx 590 is going to have an eight pin and a six pin but sometimes you might only see plus 25 don't worry about that that just means you're rocking an eight pin power 
but I think you can have eight and six pin for all of them. So yeah, set your max power. This is gonna help you maintain your boost clock. It's very important, very important on the video cards as well. Now for overclocking, I always recommend you set the fans to max. I know it's gonna be noisy, but we're gonna do that. So we're gonna max out the fans because we wanna keep the GPU cool. We're just looking about getting a stable overclock. You can set fans afterwards. So you can set auto, or if you press that one there, that's gonna set your custom fan. So there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. Right, let's go with the memory first then. So for the memory, you can see it says 2,100 there. I did say 2,100. So you times that by four, that's 8.4 gigabits per second. And we want nine gigabits per second. So we're gonna put in 2250. And then you can see, so here we go. Times that by four, nine gigabit per second. Now, the RX 590 Nitro Plus at current is one of the weakest RX 590s from stock clocks. It's at 1,560. And for all of you, I recommend, even though some of you won't have to add much, I would recommend just starting with 1600 megahertz. Start with 1600 megahertz. Now this program here is called Heaven Benchmark that it's running on, I forgot to mention that. Um, and just probably, I would leave this running between half an hour and an hour. People say if you don't get an artifact within five or 10 minutes, it's fine, but still leave it going for an hour, then start running your games. Now what you can do now is save this as a profile. So we're going to save this as profile one. So we've got a 1600 megahertz profile, right? Now, the reason this is useful is I get the odd game. I've always found PUBG doesn't like my maximum GPU overclock. Sometimes it just needs to be lowered a little bit. Works really well with the 590, but on the video cards, I normally have to drop it down just a touch. So that's why we save profiles, because you might find one overclock works really well for one game, but it won't for the other. So now we're at 1600 megahertz. You've tested that out for a bit. For me, this is where I've had to start adding voltage. Now, when it comes to adding voltage, the way that MSI Afterburn is set up or the way that NVIDIA and AMD cards are set up, without doing BIOS mods or power shunt mods, you can't bring in more power, more voltage without voltage mods. It, it doesn't let you set a voltage that is too dangerous for the card that will kill it instantly. Now, obviously, we are adding more voltage. We are overclocking. That isn't a how long is it going to last? Is it going to last three months? Is it going to last 30 years? There is no way of telling. But we have a beefy graphics card with a beefy cooler, so it can take the voltage bump. Now, normally, you would just increase your clock a little bit. Say 1625. You'd see if it's crashed and then start adding your voltage. I've just gone for max voltage here, just done the max voltage bump. Then what you can do is if you're happy with your overclock, you think it's stable, you can start to lower it down. Some people like to work up. I always like to go high and work my way back. So now 1625 megahertz is what I'm seeing a lot of RX 590s type out at either 1625 or 1600. So I would probably recommend doing the same again, running this for half an hour, an hour, playing some games and then just setting it as a profile. So we're going to set that to profile two. So there we go. You see, we've got a 1625. Core voltage is at plus 25. I haven't had to add much voltage for the 1625. You might find you have to add all your voltage. Now for 1650, I had to max out the voltage. There was no way around it. Most of my games were stable. I had a crash in Grand Theft Auto 5 and I had a crash in Battlefield 5 and also in Black Ops 4 without adding any voltage. So again, same steps. Set it to 1650. Run some benchmark tests. You don't have to use heaven, any benchmark program you want. Play the games that you like to play. Get that saved as a profile. And there you go. So there you go. We have three profiles, overclock profiles for the RX 590. Now, depending on your case thermals and stuff, you can now start setting your fan to how you want it. Now, as always, like I said, you do do this at your own risk, but I literally haven't had a hiccup whatsoever. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Football FC Gaming, um, we're quite good friends on Discord and we play a lot of games together. Both bought this graphics card on the same day and he hasn't had any issues with it at 1650 either. But some of you might find it a bit harder. So this 1625 might be your sweet spot. Now I'm hearing a few people going up to 1680, but I'm not going to push it that far and I'm not going to even benchmark it that far because I know a lot of you won't be able to do it. 
Anyway, that's it from me today. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you like the video, tell me why. If you don't like the video, tell me why. And I'll be back with some more overclocking and gaming benchmarks very soon.